you're a polymer chemist. Yes. What what is that, and what does that have to do with wood or, or guitars, but but primarily wood and. Mm -hmm. Um, wood is a polymer, it's cellulose of course, um, and all of the cells of wood are made up of a complex natural polymer. So what I've learned in the polymer area, which I have many patents in, uh, I work for a very large international chemical company, and polymer chemical company, and um, it's transferable exactly to what we do with wood. So the idea came from polymers, wood being a polymer, it was solved as a polymer problem. And I don't know that anyone out there is really looking at it. A lot of people look at it as a physics problem. Um, I have a background in physics and chemistry, but the, chemi the chemistry really gave me the, the core to the solution. There's a lot of guys that are changing bracing and putting a sound hole here and changing contours. Mm -hmm. uh, and these are what, like what that's you physics. just said. That's physics. That's physics. This is like phys sure. acoustic physicists mm -hmm. and stuff. This goes beyond that. This, yes. This is a, I don't want to say molecular, but this is, this is an intrinsic change. Our process will... Uh, improve even those guitars with the uh, the other bracing and the other porting. Yes, absolutely. Who should have this process done? Everyone that's serious about their acoustic guitar and wants the most playability, the most relaxed feel when playing the guitar, uh, the least fatigue, and the absolute richest sound possible. When I hear some wonderful recordings, professional recordings, my ear will tell me what that guitar would sound like if it were to go through that proce our process. And um, I can hear that, and it's sad to me that such a wonderful song is recorded and, and that guitar is not sounding as good as it could be if it were to go through the process. Frank, I know, I know you've done dozens of different types of guitars. Uh, the first one I saw was a Guild 12 string that you had, had done. I know that you've done Martins, Paxa Maiul, Classicals, Tippin, Lara V, my, my Gibson, Taylor. Taylor. Um, I know the list keeps growing every day as people get more interested in this, in this process. So the question is, how are you showing or quantifying the differences from the before to the after, and what are those results? What what have those been results? Mm -hmm. Other than the playing and feeling, there there will be some of these results posted on the website. But um, generally, what what I see is uh, noticeably increased sustain. Um, so when you pluck one string, it takes less force, um, which is the other the other half of it. I guess the same force gives you more volume. Um, so that would equate the, to lighter touch gives you the same volume that you had before. And that's very important when it comes to fatigue. Um, and the sound, because it's richer, it sounds like you're playing through a set of headphones, that your guitar live feels like it would be during a, uh, a studio recording, but you need no electronics to get to that. It's the wood working in concert with itself and with the strings and the bridge and every element of the guitar um, to give a very, very rich, very, very full sound with great sustain and um, great dynamic range. Frank, people are generally skeptical, and this is a pretty dramatic claim that you're making about this process. It is. And it's a pretty dramatic process. And it's pretty dramatic results. So for people that can't be there and feel a guitar before and after, and it's really hard to show this on the website, what, what quantifiable reports are you showing? Is there anything that you're recording to show a, a before and after, a baseline? Yes. Um, I do a full spectrum analysis on each note, uh, each string, um, up and down the fretboard, and um, I also do a test that gives a constant force to pluck the string and how many decibels and what frequencies come out with that plucking. So uh, I use a dual trace digital oscilloscope in various places on the guitar, and I model each guitar that I get before and after, and I can easily quantify the changes. Typical volume changes are on the order of three to five decibels before and after the process. And as you know, every three, de every three decibels is a doubling of the sound. So it's a very substantial change, and even the most skeptical people uh, think they won't be able to detect the difference, and you can hear it from across the room.